Welcome to the post-game press conference for game number 30, the World Championship game of the 2015 Little League Baseball World Series. With us, representing the 2015 United States Champions for Redland Little League in Lewisbury, Pennsylvania, we have the manager of the team, Tom Piper. Questions, please. Tom, do you have uh, any inkling that this might happen, being, being low on pitching a little bit? Um, well, no, I thought we'd, you know, give them a good game, which I think we did for, you know, most of the game. Uh, I, I mean, that's probably the best hitting team I've ever seen. I mean, they were hitting pitches that I've never seen kids, especially 12-year-old kids hit. Uh, you know, I was very proud of Jaden, the way he came in and he battled. Didn't have his best stuff. I know his arm was tired and, you know, it's been a long summer for him, but he battled and held him down a couple innings. Gave us a chance, you know, 13-11. The top of our lineup, I think it was at one point. Um, but no, I, you know, it, it was it was a good team. You know, I, I'm not upset or I just think Randall Buzzell. But how was your dugout at ten to two? How were the how were the guys' demeanor? And then what were you thinking? Maybe not what they were thinking. I'm After thinking. the game? No, at, at, at ten to two. Oh, ten to two. Oh, oh, I think everybody was Scott and I. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I, I guess. My thought was it's too good to be true. Yeah. <laughs> As a coach, you know, I mean, I cannot believe this is happening. Yeah. Uh, but you know, some of the at bats they put together, it's just, I mean, it's testament to them. They they were very very good. But at ten to two, were you really feeling like it's too good to be true? Or did you think you were in pretty good shape or what? I thought it was good shape. I mean, anytime you have an eight run lead, you don't yeah. expect to give that up immediately like we did. Um, but. I mean, they, they, they hit the ball. It wasn't like we were committing errors and walking people. You know what I mean? They were just putting the ball in play and, and, and hitting it where we weren't. And, was, and having been involved in a couple of these things, you, you coaches tend to try to temper the kids down in the dugout, but maybe you didn't. I don't know. No, not really. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty, I mean, they get excited, but they're, you know, they know the next day they have to go out and play defense. Yeah. And, you know, there wasn't a whole lot I needed to say. Uh, you know, just just couldn't get out of that next inning. I mean, I think if it was 10 to two and we would have held them to one or two runs that inning, I think we'd have been in good shape. But the fact that we left them right back in the game, you know, you know, I think it was the next inning. 10 to nine. Yeah. 10, yeah, 10 nine, right? That gave them life. So I think it would have been a different story if we would have held it down. Why, why are they such good hitters? When you guys have buried teams like this all postseason, they've stayed buried. I don't know what it is. They just put the bat on the ball. You know what I mean? They they hit a lot of balls that weren't hit super hard. I mean, they hit a lot of balls hard. Don't get me wrong. But they hit a lot of balls, and I thought Jaden made good pitches, jammed the kid, and you know he get it out into the outfield. Um, you know, I, I just think they they don't. I don't know. Do we have a strikeout? Do we strike one, anybody? One strikeout. One strikeout. I mean, that that's a testament to them. I mean, our pitchers usually strike people out, and I don't ever remember. This group of boys, that, you know, even though Caden hadn't pitched much, those three pitchers have ever given a point to hits to anybody we've ever played in the United States. So I mean, I think they're just they just put the bat on the ball. They they um, let it get a little bit deeper. I think they're not so far out in front as, as other teams. You know, when you throw the curveball, because I think a lot of their hits were on curveballs. They just hit it really well. Uh, so you talk about their pitchers, the one that came in, shut you guys down for those five innings. Obviously, they hit the ball, but you guys right. just couldn't keep up at that point. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, he was he was good. You know, soft throwing lefties. I, if anybody would ever like say, "What's your kryptonite?" I think in in knowing these kids, that's kind of what gives us the most trouble. You know, almost like Adam. You know what I mean? Our, our own Adam Kramer. He would give us fits throwing against his own team. Um, that that's what he did. I mean, I think we were one of the other kids that were throwing a little bit harder, but that soft throwing left, he just gives us a little different look that we do struggle with at the time. Was so there the right button? Was any shock sure. setting in the dugout when Japan took the lead and you guys weren't able to keep pace as much? Or? I don't think so. You know what I mean? When it was when it was one run game for all those innings or two run game for all those innings, I think everybody fully believed that we'd get some clutch hits and, and come back. Um, you know, I think it wasn't until it was 18-11 that it kind of sunk home that it might not happen. Tom, what did you see on tape from their bats, and then what led you to start with, with Chasen? Chasen well, we liked Chayton's change up. We thought we could get him with that because we knew the curveball was, wasn't really effective against them. I mean, it's all over and over. Chayton, when he has his best fastball, throws similar to that, to the, the um, boy that threw him in Mexico. Uh, 
Um, so we were looking for that. He didn't have his best basketball.